justification of order. Uh, Ms. Miller, I have approached you. I'm sorry, would you lead us in the play?
get it to the one that's qualified then there, this will benefit the teachers, the school system, and most of all, our students of the Cleveland County School System. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilbur We appreciate you sharing this information with us. The Board of Education values input and participation from our community. As a Board of Education, we will review the information presented work with the superintendent and school system staff as appropriate. Thank you again. Next item on the agenda is approval of or consideration of the minutes of the July 21st, 2014 closed attorney consultation. What's the pleasure of the board? Thank you, Mr. We approve the July 21st closed attorney session. And moved and seconded that we uh, approve the minutes of the July 21st, 2014 closed attorney consultation. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Now for consideration of the minutes of the July 21st, 2014 business session. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion we approve the July 21st, 2014 business session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of the July 21st, 2014 business session. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. On the globally competitive students, first items regarding testing. For Dr. Fisher. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. Members of the board, um, if you remember uh, last fall, we talked about the uh, state law that uh, required all testing to be done in the last five uh, days for a semester course, ten days for a year long course. And this was the law that was passed. Um, and to be honest with you, it creates some issues for our schools, um, especially uh, with senior exams, online testing. Uh, created a, a real headache, if you will, for our, our schools and our accountability department. Uh, we received a, a memo from uh, the Deputy State Superintendent Rebecca Garland and DPI uh, that we could request a waiver for this year only, and I must stress that the waiver is this year only, uh, to extend that instead of a five to ten day window, the window would be a ten day and a fifteen day window. The ten day window would be for block classes or semester classes. The fifteen day window would be for year long classes. We as an LEA could, could give that out and allow that to do if we uh, completed. Uh, we must approve that, complete an application, have it turned into DPI by September 1st, then we take it to the state board meetings in September. Uh, it is our intention, and we do ask for your approval uh, of that waiver, uh, the local lots of that waiver, and then uh, we will apply for that at the state level. Um, I, I have met with our testing accountability office. Um, our plan would be to continue with the five and ten day plan, but this this waiver would give us the flexibility in areas that it becomes a problem, senior testing and online testing. Um, just a little bit of information, uh, many of our tests now are online. For example, fifth grade science is an online test. We encourage our schools to, to do that online and works really well, but schools may not have 350 or 400 computers to be able to do that, so we have to spread that out over a couple days. You spread that over a couple of days, that takes time. Uh, when you combine that with reading to achieve, you know, uh, reading and math to achieve, uh, it, it takes time. So we would like the uh, board's approval to apply for the 10 and 15 day waiver. Uh, and if we got that, we would, our plan would be to use the 5 and 10 days as the state law uh, in the state, but we would we would have the flexibility to be able to get a 10 and 15 day waiver. So we just ask for approval for us to move forward with that waiver. Thank you. 
here
managing student conduct, teacher leadership, school leadership, professional development, instructional practices and support. Um, I have provided you on board docs all of that information. I know those reports are cumbersome to go through. I've also provided you some websites. If you want to come go through and drill down, uh, you can spend, our principal spends lots of time, our director spends times looking at teacher work and we so that with our principals. But I want to give you an overview here. Um, there was a slight increase in participation in Cleveland County Schools. Um, our participation is 96.49, which is very high. Uh, there was a time, I remember uh, years ago, uh, Mr. Harris was still a principal, um, and Mr. Hoyle, I believe, was still a principal, where our participation rate was in the 40s. It was, it was early on in that process, but now our participation rate is very high. Um, in every area, uh, the percentage of Cleveland County School teachers that agree was higher than the state average. So that's, that's positive. Now, sometimes it was a small difference, and sometimes it was a large difference. And you, you can look at that chart. One of the charts I've given you compared every area the state average to Cleveland County Schools. Um, in 2014, over 48% of the questions were scored higher by teachers than in 2012. Uh, a couple different ways to look at that. And one, that, that there's some areas that we have improved in. There's some areas that we may have not improved in. Um, one of the areas that went down is alignment to state testing, state requirements, and you can imagine. I think in, in that section, maybe one of eight uh, stayed the same went up. Many of our, our uh, things stayed the same, so uh, that, that's there. Um, now, this is important to me, the last bullet, which I think should be important to you. 91.7% um, of teachers in Cleveland County Schools agree that Cleveland County Schools are a good place to work. And, and that's the overall comparison there to uh, that, that only 90% of our teachers feel like that Cleveland County Schools is a good place to work. I'm going to go real quickly just through a few highlights, uh, a few highlights that, that um, show some things that we're doing really well things maybe we, we need to pay close attention to. Uh, just uh, real quickly, I'm going to say 5% of our teachers agree that class sizes are reasonable. It says the teachers have time to meet student needs. While that's only 75%, that's something we'd like to see higher. Again, that's higher than the state average. But that's something we look at when we look at class size. 74% uh, or 74% agree that non-structural time is provided is sufficient. That's something that principals look at. They look at that master schedule understanding the three out of four teachers Again, this is district data. Each school would have their own data that would that would be it could be greater, could be less, it could be the same. Eighty-two percent of teachers agree that they're protected from duties that interfere with their central role of teaching. That's pretty that's important to make sure the teachers are protected from, from those things that interfere with teaching. Um, facility and resources, almost eighty-three percent agree that they have sufficient access to appropriate instructional materials. Um, and, you know, that's one of those where you can look at two ways. Although we are quite higher than the state, we would like to see that continue to increase where our teachers have it the, the material they need. Um, this is, I thought, was important. 95% of the school environment is clean and well maintained. Uh, community support and involvement. Over 88% agree that the community members support teachers contributing to the success of students. Uh, over 94% agree that the school does a good job of encouraging parent and guardian involvement. My question in the continuous improvement there would be, you know, while we feel like we're doing a good job of that, what's, what's the parental response? How do we do that? And, and we sometimes feel like we're doing a good job, but what are the results showing? So those are areas that our, our schools and our principals still improve the team continue to look at. Over 90% agree that the community they serve is supportive of the school, and I believe that's true in our county. We have great support for our school system, I believe that's important. Managing student conduct, over 86% agree that policies and procedures about school conduct are clearly understood by the faculty. Uh, school closure, the state average there, but still above that state average. Um, this is another one, especially as we move into uh, safe schools. Uh, we want to make sure we have a good climate environment, that over 96% of teachers agree that they work in a school environment that is safe. Teacher leadership, almost 90% agree that teachers are trusted to make sound professional decisions about instruction. Over 93% agree that teachers are encouraged to participate in school leadership roles. It's very close to the state average, but, but uh, that's a high percentage. Uh, over 77% agree that teachers have an appropriate level of influence on decision making at the school. I thought that was interesting. But over three out of four feel like they have an appropriate level of influence in school making decisions. That would be something as a principal I would look at in my school. What would my teacher feel like their decision making? Um, over 81% agree that they feel comfortable raising issues and concerns that are important to them. That's an area that if teachers have concerns, we want them to be comfortable sharing those concerns and 
talk about that. Uh, the, the data there shows that over 8% are, but we want to continue to see that rise. 92% uh, or 90% agree that the school improvement team provides effective leadership at the school. That's very important. And above 9% agree that the school leadership makes a sustained effort to address teacher concerns about a variety of topics. Uh, this question on, on the Teacher Working View Survey had lots of topics, and, 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 um, and they got to rate each individual topic. So instead of giving you each individual topic, uh, I, I tell you this is an average of an average, and as a math teacher, that's not a, a sound mathematical principle, but it, it gives a good representation of, of our teachers feel like that the leadership is, in their school is addressing things that are important to them. Um, the, the last two, I believe, uh, Practices or, or categories. 92% agree that professional learning communities are aligned with the school's improvement plan. It's important that the things we're doing in our PLCs and our work is are aligned to the improvement plans. 77% uh, percent agree that professional development is differentiated to meet the individual needs of students. Again, that's a, that's a good number. Differentiation is something that's important. That's one of those numbers that we like to see continue to rise, although it is over 11% higher than the state. 88.6% uh, agree that professional development offerings are data driven. Uh, one of our lower areas, and this is, uh, as I, I commented earlier, about some areas that, that were higher in 2012 that have gone down in 2014, 53%, a little over 53% of our teachers agree that state assessment data are available in time to impact instructional practice. Uh, I'm quite honestly surprised that's at 53. Uh, if you remember, we didn't get state data back until late October last year, so uh, that, uh, that is an area that is lower in a significant decrease if you look at the, the chart that compares 2012 to 2014. 95% um, of teachers agree that, that they use assessment data to inform instruction. And almost 92% agree that teachers have autonomy to make decisions about instructional delivery. That academic freedom is, is important there. Um, we, we do have uh, this, this information is available on our website. Uh, you know, sometimes we have uh, folks call and ask about that. It's uh, under the about us tab. People, folks can go and that link is there. Uh, you also have the teacher conditions there. You can compare our district to other districts. Every district is there. You can drill down to the state and school, school specific data and look at that. Uh, as we have conversations with our principals and our leadership teams at those schools, uh, we look at that data with our principals and determine what are, what are areas that we, we need to improve. On. We understand you know, we take those, those words seriously. Uh, we talk about continuous improvement. We want to be continue to improve our schools, continue to be the best school that we can be. Um, you know, standing pat on land is, is, is not an option. We have to continue to work every day, look at the areas that we that we need to improve, continue to work in those areas. So um, I'll be glad to try to answer any specific questions you have about teacher work in the survey. Um, or you know, as you look through that, feel free to, to contact us with any of that data we can help to, to, to pull some of that. Any specific questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I just uh, wanted to make a quick uh, comment and, and observation. Uh, probably we should continually emphasize, as you noted and Dr. Hopper noted, that we should also continue to strive for continuous improvement. Uh, I, I think this uh, survey uh, also affirms uh, the opportunities for our teachers to you know, express themselves and, and uh, provide feedback in terms of conditions to help improve student learning. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this, this represents one of the opportunities to give teachers an opportunity to, to engage and to make comments, productive, positive, uh, productive comments, as well as dispel, you know, this sometimes myth and, and perception that sometimes teachers don't have the opportunity to express, you know, the conditions and their, their feelings and comments. But again, I think this certainly affirms that why we always acknowledge that we should continue to look for continuous improvement in every opportunity. I know our, our administrative team, your central office, the administrative teams in our schools uh, take this data very seriously. It's something that we, we talk about using our group of plans. And I was also pleased that it's one of the highest in, in, our, uh, in our district, as well as above the uh, data was above the state average, which I was very pleased to see as well. Yeah, with, with, with the only report we the only report we get is participation rate excuse me um, so we know and our principals encourage our teachers to, to
to go on and just make a little bit more piece of what our teachers are going to And I'll add to the website that, that you can get to the, the individual schools and
that's a, that's pretty amazing. Uh, but usually you think, well, it'll be at least a couple that we would. And uh, certainly, I'm going to share some of the questions that could probably be worded better. But uh, I think uh, it is what it is. But it's but I want to say, you know, working in school, I've seen the teachers fill these out. They take it very seriously. It is private. They do it on their own. It's totally anonymous. They know it's totally anonymous. We don't even get the results back for some months after the it goes down to Raleigh and, and they and they figure it out and give it back to us. So uh, it's really a, I think a, a real great tool to use and I think uh, it really says a lot of good things about Cleveland County schools. When you look at our schools and compare it in these various areas with some of the other school systems, we're not perfect by any means, but there are certain areas we can work on. But I think this says we've got a lot of teachers uh, that are very, very satisfied with what we're doing. Jerry, right. It was taken seriously. I know when Jerry and I were calling in for annual principal evaluations, the superintendent pulled out those working condition surveys, and that was one of the things we talked about during our evaluations as principals. So it's, it's taken seriously. Yeah, I'm ready to I'm going to see. Dr. Fisher, yes. I know it's available to our staff and teachers out here, but are you telling our administrators to share that with them? Jerry, the can just let them know exactly what the district's feedback is on particular items that, you know, kind of give them an idea. We will, and we touched on some of those in our district group last week, uh, and we continue to do that. I know the schools use that data for school approval teams and the community network, some of that work's already started, uh, but with some of our schools, but we will continue to emphasize to make sure they share those those uh, things. And, and I will say, um, you know, you, you can you can test and check, go back and check me on this. I, I, didn't, I didn't, didn't choose all the good ones. I, I chose uh, a wide variety. I chose some that were in the bottom there. That uh, so uh, uh, we wouldn't uh, wouldn't be sure you could. I want to give you a good honest look at some of our some of the questions are in the sixties and seventies. And those are some things we have to take a strong look at to see uh, is that an area where we are interested. Can I ask one more question? Mm -hmm. Do we do any parent surveys at all? That is not uh, we have not in the past, uh, and that's. Uh, this is just a, a, a teacher. I understand it is, but it would be nice if we hold some parents like in the same to get a bill for One thing I think is, and I'll be quite new, but that I'm, uh, that I'm proud of is that 96.5% of the staff believe that they're working in a safe environment. I think that's huge. And I think this district has moved forward in the last few years to proving these campuses to make sure that they're safe. Uh, we have to share it with the community, and I would hope the community would look at us and say, we believe in you to make this happen, because I don't believe we need to share that information with the citizens and tell them what improvements to do for safety issues, because not everybody's good. But I think that's, that's huge that our staff believe that 96% of believe that this is a safe environment. Thank you. Next item is uh, personnel report. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion to be approved for personnel report. Is it second? Second. Move and second it and be approved for personnel report. Is it in the superintendent? Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. Uh, the personnel report is made up of four sections. And only two of those are actually action items, not four, I believe. The first section, which is new hires, and the second section, which is leave of absence. The third and fourth section, which are resignations and transfers, are basically for information. That's, that's action at the discretion of the, the, the superintendent. That first section of new hires and the second section of leave of absence is actionable by the board. I move that we consider those two sections separately and move on separately. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, asking, I'm asking to amend the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the motion on the floor is to vote on the personnel report. My motion is to amend how we vote on that personnel report. I vote in section one and section two separately. But since we have to, we have to get the approval for you to amend it, we've not. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, sir. So, Mr. Falls, I believe you made the motion. Mr. Sheriff, Ms. Miller. I think that, that there are some concerns with section one that do not exist with section 
two, and uh, would allow board members to make a distinction between those two sections.
least this would allow board members that wanted to vote no to, to this section, but they don't have a problem with that one, that they can do that. that they can vote, for example, if, if somebody supported the leave of absence, they don't have any problem with leave of absence, this would allow them to vote yes to the leave of absence, but it would allow them to vote no to the new hires if they want to do that. The way the main motion stands now, that they have to vote for both section one and two together, or section one and two separately. I guess my my thing is even in that section one, if there's one or two people that you're voting against, you're still voting against all the other ones that are on there too. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Even if you're in favor of all, you're actually voting against them. Yes. Well, I'd like for it to be all the time, not just the night, uh, to separate this thing up just a little bit because uh, there are many cases that, well, I voted in quite a few times that I would have voted on some of these things that I voted yes, but but by being all in one group, uh, I'm standing on when I feel feel confident on something, I'm standing on. And I'm about to get, I'm about to know against some things that I really wanted to vote yes for. Well, unless you make a motion to amend the amended motion. Well, I think that I think Mr. Harris on um, his motion, and I, I'd like for it to be every, well, I'd like a motion for it to be every meeting. Then I make a motion. <laughs> Got to amend. The way to do it. All right. Is to amend the amended motion. And I'll end the amended motion then. All right. Mr. Motion amended. Thank you. All right. Is that all I did it right. You did it right on period. Yes, you did it right. Okay. All right. So we're back with the motion on the floor okay. now. And it's the eighth further yeah. discussion on the motion okay. floor, which is the amended. The air we call the air.
and you've got that seal that's been put in there that wasn't there before with the scales. Uh, career, career status was not tied to the uh, to the salary increase, and that's a good thing because it uh, you know it was originally the uh, people that are at the top of the pay scale will receive a thousand dollar bonus. That bonus will be paid monthly. Our school based administrators see an average increase of 2%. That increase, however, will range from 0.65% to 2%. And those at the top of the scale that do not uh, get an increase will get a excuse me, back up. Principals at the top of the scale that, that do not get an increase will we get an $809 bonus. When you look at our school building administrators, your assistant principals, if you happen to be in one of those clusters starting out as an AP, uh, zero to nine years in your uh, years of certification, you're stuck at the same pay level. There is not a salary increase built into that AP scale. It's the same that it was last year. So, like the teacher at, uh, excuse me, the, the principal at the top of the scale, those APs at the beginning stage, if they're in that, still in that zero to nine year cluster, they will receive a one time, non recurring $809 bonus. That will go away and they will continue in that cluster until they get to 10 years of service and then will begin to move along the steps. And once they get to that point, then the average increase will be approximately a 2% salary increase at whatever the person's salary was the year before. I say that to you because it is also similar for principals. Principals begin in a, in a cluster as a principal one all the way out to a principal eight salary table. Zero to 13 years for a principal, as a principal one, is one cluster. There is an increase in that category for principal one, and it is $28 a month. So those principals that are in that cluster will get $28 a month times 12 months, whatever that turns out to be, is 300 and some, some bucks. And that will be the increase for those principals right there. Everybody else that gets out of that beginning cluster will receive a 2% average increase across the scale until the top out of the A scale. The top did not change in the principal scale either. At the far end of the principal scale, the principal A, which is a large high school, you have to be in that category. Zero to 23 years is the cluster for that beginning stage right there. If you, if you happen to be in that zero to 23 years, you're going to stay there until you get to the 24th year, and your increase is going to be 38 bucks, or excuse me, 36 bucks a month. It's one of those things that all the glitters is not gold. The uh, non certs will receive a $500 salary increase. There's two things I need to, to remind you uh, about this and basically that's everybody that's not paid off of a uh, teacher scale. So all of the work that you put into trying to implement the local salary scale a couple of years ago and the work to, to get those salary increases implemented, all of that is going to go away. You're going to go back to the situation that, that we had way back then, whenever you have a custodian. We, we put all custodians on a years of service and, and, and a step, and, and we had something that made sense. Now then, as an example, if you're a 10-month custodian, and we'll say you're, you're at step 15, it wouldn't matter if you were 10 months or 12 months. 
there would be some salary level that would be associated with that for years of service of the custodian. Now then, there will be a salary level for that still for a 10 month custodian, which will be $50, not more than it was this past year. If you're at that same step for a custodian as a 12 month employee, it's not going to be the same salary anymore. It's going to be what it was last year plus $42 because the increase is a $500 annual increase. It's really going to mess the scale up. And, and, and you, you have a situation where you have a uh, 10 month custodian who, let's just say, it was the same as a, a 12 month and his salary was $1,850. Well, that salary may be $1,800 itself right now. So whenever you, they go from a 10 month to a 12 month position, the monthly salary actually is going to slightly go down if you keep your steps in place because of that $500 annual increase of 12 months versus 10 months. The other thing that I would say to you about the non-certified scale as uh, Mr. Pless has, has so uh, eloquently pointed out to our, our legislators, down the Kemper Road, you have two sets of mechanics, DOT mechanics, school bus mechanics. The DOT mechanics are, are pulling wrenches, do a very important job, but they're working on the trucks that are hauling sand and gravel and brine. They're going to receive $1,000 annual increase and five bonus days. You go right next door to the end of the street, and those mechanics that are pulling wrenches, that are working on the trucks, that are hauling those children that the, this community has entrusted us with, they're going to receive $500 and no bonus day. Last part of this is the educational supplements. They will uh, remain intact. They finally got, got put back into the thing, to the scale. I will tell you that there was a little bit of uh, probably a dig to say I got you in, in that process. It used to be that if you were national boards and you had a master's degree, your national boards was 12% higher than what your, your master's salary was. Now then, everything is calculated off the A scale. So if you receive a, a master's degree, it's 10% higher than what your A certificate salary would be. If you then also receive a national board certification, it is 12% higher than what your A certificate salary is. Not what your master's pay was. Put the salary tables in there uh, just to say to you that if you look at those salary increases, particularly around year five, six, seven, and everything, that looks great and, and it is good. And I'm glad that our, our teachers are, are getting a, uh, a good increase. But if, if you put that in uh, terms of if you were a, a craftsman and you were a cabinet maker, apparently around your fifth year, you would have made as much improvement in your craft as you're ever going to make. And over the rest of that, that year, or over the rest of that uh, term of your tenure, you're going to become less and less valuable to the system until you get down to the point that ultimately you have a 0.3% increase in value that you're adding to the system. So it's great. I'm glad our teachers are getting an increase, and I hope that they see this, but I hope that they also look at it in the big picture and long term and say that there's a day that I'm not going to be at year five or six, and someday I'm going to be at year 25, 26, 27. Are they really doing anything for me at that stage?
there's been a lot of discussion about teacher assistance and, and whether they were funded or they were not funded. Teacher assistance was reduced $129 million in recurring funding. They were increased $24 million in non-recurring funding, meaning that that funding is for this year only and it will go away. So ultimately, the reduction in teacher assistance is $105 million. I will tell you that uh, the, the chief budget writer for the Senate, Mr. Dollar, and that's a great name for, it, for a budget writer. It really is. Uh, however, and this is reflected in my age, so I apologize to Dr. Fisher, who may not be able to remember James Bond, but it, it may be more reminiscent of Miss Money, Money Penny, as opposed to Mr. Dollar. You, know, you see the impact that this uh, budget has had on, on education. But his comment is that we cut the budget $85 million, which is what schools last year converted to other funding categories such as supplies, teacher, whatever. So there's no reason for schools to have to eliminate any teacher assistant positions. That comment is disingenuous at best. It's just flat wrong at worst. You can decide who that, that turns out to be. The funding is cut. There may have been schools that actually wavered teacher assistance all teachers, but if they ain't in the budget, part of the English, one place or another, there is a cut there, and this is there. There's $113 million of teacher assistant funding that has been moved to the lottery funds. Those monies have to be reauthorized each year by the General Assembly. The question is, is that simply a way to it and cut it without it really ever cut it because if y'all reauthorize it, it wouldn't be there to begin with. And that would be equivalent to another great thing. Our central office has been cut 3%. The transportation cut. The uh, Department of Public Instruction has been cut 10%. And been, this is, I guess, cutting the way to excellent. They, they, there's a continued trend really cutting DPI extremely hard. So they cut the 10% this time and then put it in the statutes a 72 hour mandate for them to respond to what the LS people may be able to they should have gone out a little further as opposed to, to being restricted in that process. Uh, funding for driver's training is deleted from the budget in fact in July 1 2015. This legislation right here says that you can charge an additional ten dollars, up to sixty-five dollars, for the, the families that, uh, that you're providing driver's training to right now. If you look at the funding with the, uh, the current charges, it's somewhere around two hundred twenty-five bucks uh, a person. Next year, you'd be able to charge 65, but we, the statute says that you will provide the office training. So it's an unfunded mandate as it stands right now. And we're just going to have to figure out where that's going to come from next year. Uh, the, the more disturbing piece of this budget is that it eliminates any growth going forward. On the base budget. And that's been a, a sticking point that the General Assembly has, has always argued uh, that we gave you more money than they, we gave you last year. And, and that's partially true in the fact that the, the budget may have gone up a little bit in, in total dollars, but, but they never even funded what the growth of the, of the budget was for the total additional students that, that are coming in. And, and this will eliminate that argument because ADM growth will not be in the budget. DPI said that they will not be able to provide 
plan a lot of for us, but to be able to take the budget, where did it last year, and give you a dollar more and say that you spent more on education, that would be a true statement. Uh, that takes us to the end of the slide. If you want to have to try to respond to any questions or comments that you may have. Yes, sir. Um, thank you, Dr. Levine, for uh, going through that nightmare of a budget. Um, did want to ask you a question. Um, I did see the guts, of course, in TA funding uh, from the state level. What does that mean for us locally? Um, you know, what are we looking at? Uh, are we going to be the same? We're not going to have to do anything it this is, year. It's 36 to 38 positions. Uh, we will look to, to try to do that uh, across time, but we will match our uh, allotments Sometime during the course of the year, what our funding turns out to be, we think that with the positions that we, we have frozen to this point, that we're about halfway there, and we think that by the end of the year, we will, we will be where we need to be. So, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't follow you. 36 to 38 positions is the impact on the Cleveland County Schools. We do not have the actual allotment from DPI yet. We're just doing the, the percentages that, that they said. So, we're losing 36 to 38? Yes. Position or uh, a 
position like that that requires a, a master's yeah. part. So exactly. there's only a few of those. Okay. So, so the general yes, assembly. Yes, they were already enrolled. Yeah, they're okay. But for the general assembly, advanced degrees are not worth anything in education. Well,
honorable know that everyone up here you know, stands on that. Uh, and I'm not on the secretary to lift your job. Don't get me wrong there. But. Is that your second question? No, my, uh, my second question is, you said a thousand dollars on that DOT with five days bonus. Yes. And our bus people, 500 with two days bonus. Did uh, last year, did, did the school people get a five day bonus, but they couldn't use the structure on base to take one of those days off? It was five, five long school days. And, and, and the bus department got that, but the DOT didn't get five days then, did it? I have no idea. Uh, okay, well, I, I don't think so. But well, I think all state employees got that, because I was a state employee. Okay, good. 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 So everybody got that five days. Well, I, uh, well, I promise you, I'll call Raleigh tomorrow. If they don't get it to one, they ought to get it to all. They'll be straight across the board. Uh, Mr. Lyon, if I can answer your question just real quickly and briefly, and then I don't want to get into too much. On the set, but, but, you know, we're always looking at positions that we can, um, we can, we can absorb, we can do some things. Uh, we've got folks that are doing interims uh, that, that you know, build, build up some positions. Some different things. So, you know, the, the, the short answer is yes, we're always looking at, at, at items, and that's why we've taken this approach to be able to see what, what we can do. We'll take a slow approach to, to doing that and making sure because we understand, um, you know, not only are students our number one priority, as I mentioned in our administrative trip, student learning, student achievement is job number priority. We have to do the things that we need to do to continue student achievement and student learning. So, you know, I, I can assure you that. We are all looking at, at positions saying, can we, can we do this, can we do that? And, and, and the roles of the school um, personnel are changing. You know, um, everybody's, do, you know, everybody's doing more, but, but everything that, that folks at school level do is, is how does that impact uh, student learning, student achievement? So the short answer is yes, we are we're, we're continuing to evaluate uh, those positions. That's as we do that. That's why we, we take a lot to make sure we uh, Mr. Yeah, I have a question on longevity, which is, was always a big deal as a former state employee. That was something we always look forward to. It, did, does it only affect certified teachers? Does it affect the longevity? Does it affect administrators? Or it any? affects those that are paid on the teacher scale. Uh, everybody else will retain longevity, and, and I didn't say this when I went through the slide. If you were, if you received longevity as, as a teacher last year, you will receive longevity this year on your anniversary day for the last time. And it, it, it'll go away from that, and it will be prorated as to whatever your anniversary date turns out to be through this past June. So, you know, it could be 50% or, or whatever that, that it, it just turns out to be. But they will receive longevity this year on their anniversary date if they received it last year. However, if you were, uh, again, doing age, you went back to Maxwell Smart, if you were eligible to receive longevity for the very first time this year, meaning that you completed 10 years of service, you were that close, but you missed it in, in that process. So you had to have received it last year to receive it a prorated amount this past year, or excuse me, a prorated amount based on this past June, uh, June 30th, what uh, number of months you had earned year last year. You know, and I might be going through deep, but just getting questions out here. If you're a certified teacher and you lose that long duty and you move on up to assistant principal and the principal, will you jump yeah. back and get your long duty back? If you're if you're a school based administrator right now, you will receive longevity and, and whenever they go into those positions they would um, they would be eligible for longevity. Yes. So they would they would reverse in a sense and then you can start receiving one time check them up for a long Well
just on the anniversary of right. the Well, and then my other comment is, is, is this morning, the uh, General Assembly has some good PR people with their headlines with the you know, PA cuts and 7 percent but they forget the old saying with Paul Harvey, and that's the risk of the story, and that's the part that they leave out is the risk of the story. Uh, uh, who's toward this Paul? I, I just have a, a comment. Um, over the past few weeks, I've talked to many teachers. And overwhelmingly, the comments from the teachers were his. I would rather not have a raise and allow the teacher assistants to keep their jobs because we need them. So I think that that's the way. I, I, I think the majority of the teachers feel that way, that they would have rather left it the way it was, that they feel like that our students need our teacher assistance. And that's why I'm the comment. Thank you. Mr. If I understand this correctly, what we're talking about the teacher assistance, basically, from the teacher assistance we have at the end of the year, so the teachers, so through this coming year, we're going to end up receiving probably 36 to 38 positions we're going to lose. That's probably maybe about 700,000 dollars. It's actually about a million bucks. About a million bucks. So we're going to actually have a reduction in force of 36 to 38 people. But hopefully we won't be laying anybody off or not planning to because we're going to, as they retire or quit or move off or whatever, we just won't replace them. But we're going to end up paying those people out of our local funds and out of other funds that whatever amount it takes to get them through the year without actually losing them. So it's actually, we're going to actually, it's going to affect our budget by, in other words, what I'm saying is we're trying to do everything we can to keep laying people off, even though it's, we're going to have to pay the difference. The fact the state's not paying their salary and we keep these 36 or 37 for the months that they're staying, we're going to end up paying their budget, paying their it, there will be a cost involved. We know that, that we will life size ourselves before the end of the year, but, but there, will be a, there will be a lot of cost, yes. Other, other questions or comments? Thank you, David. Thank you. By the way, it's fantastic. Well, this is an offering that comes along with it to have websites for teachers, for schools, and if we would, would like to make the change to the district site as well. So this is something that we put together. All the content has been moved, moved over. I believe it's a little bit cleaner. It's easier to read. Um, very easy to nav. And if you use it on your mobile device, you can thumb through it pretty quickly. So that's a nice added plus. But we'd like to bring it to you today to take a peek at it. See if you have any comments that you would like to submit, changes you would like to make, um, just to get your feedback and how we can move forward. One of the better things about Google Sites is it is going to help us move a little faster. Um, over the last couple of years, we've had um, we've made tweaks to the server to make it uh, move as quickly as possible for all the school sites and here on the Central Services campus. Uh, this moves uh, quite fast, and, and it's. It's really nice because we can integrate a lot of tools into it. So as you can see, the calendar on the right side. So if you'd like to keep scrolling, there's two years worth of calendar entries that you can go all the way to 2015, 16 if you like. Uh, but just wanted to bring that to you today to take a look at. And if you do have any comments that you'd like to submit back or feedback, we'll make those adjustments. But if you'd like, if you would bless it at some point, we'd like to move forward. And, and make the change, I think, for the betterment of the district. One of the beauties of this also, the individual departments, um, which you can't really tell, but if you click on departments and you can go into 
Office of School Readiness, Technology, they can administrate their own page, also add their own files, they don't have to go through me. Uh, it's, it can be maintained individually, so it's a little bit more real time than what I could ever provide as being the caretaker of all the content. So that is a service that I think uh, has been a long time coming, and this implementation moving to Google Sites will allow us that flexibility and um, let, the, let the departments really man their own services. If you have any questions, just out of, uh, as you can see, we have 14 days until school starts. Uh, that's the countdown clip uh, ticker on the left side. And we do have some social media components. But otherwise, I think if you'll take some time to thumb through it, you may either grow to enjoy it or you'll give me some feedback. You so did. is it you start, but it's not one off yet? No, not yet. Okay. I can provide, well, the link was provided to Word Docs, but I'll, I'll shoot it to you again. And we'll look at it. Yes, it's on Word Docs. It's not on ours, but. We'll look for it by tomorrow, and I'll give that to you. Um, <laughs> as, Ms. Chairman, as Mr. Troll said, this is kind of we want to be able to, to bring this to the board and first preview. I've uh, just seen it uh, one or two days. He wasn't even having to look at what he was working on, so he you know, forwarded to me. Um, I would encourage you to undo um, that one to kind of throw that out there. First, I continue to maintain our current site. Uh, and we'll send Mr. Principals and let them uh, look through it and, and uh, see some advantages of the speed and accuracy and make sure we provide uh, good customer service to not only uh, our internal customers but our external customers on the website. Uh, Mr. Show will send you that link uh, just at your pleasure. I know many of you sit around home looking for links to do. So uh, as, you, uh, as, you, as you have said to do that, look through there and feel free to contact Mr. Uh, one of the, the fears that I have is you switch over our website form, our website designs, being able to. Oh, I, this this form was in this uh, this category. Of, that's where it was. Now on new sites, so we want to make sure that as you know, we're providing both those sites for folks to be able to use uh, as we get the market. So I encourage you to take a look at that. We'll be to let you guys be the uh, first ones to, to look at that. Uh, and, 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 fresh and when and if we do make this transition. Um, we'll also add a link that goes back to the old site. So until they kind of familiarize themselves with the new navigation, they can go back and take a look at the, the old site and pull what they need to do that as well. Until we have some time to just finally pass it so we can make the, pull that link down. I, I like the tabs at the top versus where right now they're at the bottom. I think that does look like Mr. Chair, can I have uh, a observation? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what you? Yeah, it depends on the weight. <laughs> I, I know. I, I'm sorry. I'll try to do it. One observation is uh, that, uh, that got my attention when I looked at that, and, and I think it's what really is the mission. Yeah, I think we're very intentional in highlighting the mission. Every exceptional education is doing this every day for every student. And I think we need to continue to be intentional, you know, by prompting and displaying our mission and our vision and our opportunity so that we can internalize and inculcate this idea that our vision and our mission is to provide an exceptional education opportunity every day for every student. And I like that. And, and I think that's something that Mr. Hooker, it seems like you believe in that mission, which co also coincides with the campaign I believe in Cleveland County Schools. We need to be intentional. Yes, sure. Mr. <coughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, I would say that this looks great. Um, after all the talk about James Bond and stuff, it's good to come back to you know, now. And when we look at this site, I think it looks great. In the sense, a couple of things I would like to see. Maybe a message. Um, Putting our kids in a video format somewhere on the front page. Maybe you can play it. And I know it's easy to do. And uh, another thing, I don't know, you probably already have this up here, though. If you go to an article, the New Grand Principal Secondary Curriculum, and we can click on that in somewhere maybe, you know, pretty easy and shareable to Facebook, you know, putting that good news out where they can just do like one click and share it pretty quick. I, I just think that's as interactive as the internet is, I think that would be really cool because I think that's good news and I would want to share it. Dr. Dixon's been hired or something to put it out there pretty quick. But I think everything looks great. I'm already, I mean, I'm, my question is when is it going to go live? Uh, I would like to see that. 
I think with a few more tweaks we can get we can make that happen. But again, I think if we get feedback from everyone just to make sure that we're taking everyone's uh, thoughts into account, especially principals as well, I think that would be a good way to move forward. Just to when you make it available. Absolutely. I'm sure you're going to get inundated from what you've heard here tonight, just with this brief thing. So <clears throat> better leave all your contact numbers. <laughs> I think it's SRS. You guys are saying we can have a little Greg, Clinton Gang Schools has some really bright students, and some of them think it's a great sport to try to hack into this thing. Are you comfortable with the local security that Google has given us? I don't think we could ever match that locally. Okay. Absolutely. But if they if they can take it down, then I've got it backed up. Okay. We'll put it back. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's see if I hear Next, we have an action item, I believe. Ms. Beam, you're going to talk to us and ask for approval of the Head Start plans, I believe. Dr. Hamrick, board members, and Dr. Fisher, there's two items the Head Start plans and then the policy council member selection. That's how we select members to the Head Start policy council, not how we select children. And I believe we've had these on our board docs since uh, the uh, uh, meeting was scheduled. Uh, what's the pleasure? What can we vote for both of them at the same time, or do we need them individually? I'm okay with both of them. I'm okay with both of them. What's the pleasure of the board? Move to approve the Head Start Education and Early Childhood Development Plan, Health Services Plan, Ongoing Monitoring Plan, School Readiness Plan, and Policy Council Election Procedure um, for the Board as presented. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> the motion has just been well expressed by Mr. Thurman uh, <clears throat> and it's been seconded by Ms. Falls. Any discussion? If not, just quickly, uh, <laughs> just quickly. Yes, I can't remember what attachment, but I was impressed with the number of hours, parents, hours, volunteer hours. Uh, that was the annual uh, report to the public. I think I emailed that to you today. Yes, thank you very much. And more men participation, more fathers, I should say, participation. I always encourage that when I was on the third council, and I'm glad to see that that's continued. Thank you. Any further comments? If not, motion's on the floor. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes uh, unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Mr. Yarbrough, I believe you're going to discuss and make a, possibly make a recommendation on the Grover right away that you put on board docs. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Uh, board members, uh, the town of Grover has requested a transfer of property uh, to create a permanent right away on Dogwood Drive. Dogwood Drive is the uh, street that runs off of Carolina Avenue on the north side of the Grover campus. Um, we currently, this is a, an existing road that we currently use it for our student drop off and pick up. Uh, we use it for uh, access to our K classroom. <coughs> our staff uses it to access parking in the, the back of the uh, facility. Um, it's my understanding that they need this right away before they can be funded for this uh, construction project on top of it. So, uh, you know, and again, I do stress that it's not looking to uh, relocate or change the drive, it's just to, uh, uh, to have a permanent right away. They have a, a right away for about 500 feet of uh, Dalton Drive now, but there's about a 300 foot section that uh, there's no right away at all. So, uh, and then they're asking for a 45 foot right away. Um, so, uh, I'd be uh, glad to answer any specific questions. If that's not the playground? Yes, sir. What about the people on the other side here? Uh, and, and again, I, I'm, uh, the majority of the, of the, the section that's beside the uh, playground is the area that there is a, a 50 foot right away there now. It's just. Uh, Dr. Lutz, can you bring that up? Let me just take this one. Um, the highlighted area is the area where we're 
referring to. Just for a point of reference, the uh, school sits about 7 o'clock here. And Dogwood Drive comes down to Carolina Avenue. And they have a 50-foot driveway in this area. This, this uh, branch here is where we do our student drop off and pick up. This area here is where we access our free K classroom. They're looking to have a permanent driveway. Right there. Isn't there a couple of houses right there? 
Yes, sir. Okay, that, that, that big track of land, I think I know who owns that. Uh, the one behind it right there. Does that say Daniel Blanton? <laughs> uh, I can see that part. And it's not printed on here. Uh, the top name? Well, I think it is. <laughs> uh, I prefer to play calls. In other words, uh, about, you know, coming down by there. Well, just, just to point out for the uh, point of reference, Mr. Hull, this is our parking lot. And I think Mr. Hull's request is to contact, and, and I've talked with uh, Mayor Leffert a number of times, I'll be more glad to see the possibilities of moving that. Uh, I will share this. I know at this point in time, their plan is to make repairs to the existing road. There have not been any conversation of relocating. Um, and I do not know the history of why that turn came off the property line. I don't know if it's flood water you know, but I can, I feel very comfortable in communicating uh, that, that information with the county program to see that. I will say this from, from just from my perspective, I think wherever the road is, I think it's in the best interest our school district for them to own that and maintain that and take the liability if something would happen. Mm -hmm. So, so let me just, y'all are wanting to see if they'll maintain the road because they're going to have to maintain the road and all they're wanting from us is just right away? Yeah, but see, that right away is in between. What, yeah, what, what, what I'm hearing Mr. Wolf saying is get them to spray down the road. Some, but it would also mean that where that road has been and our school is located, our school is located probably uh, 150 feet, uh, 200 feet away. If it comes up there, that means that we have to stay 50 feet or so away probably from the right way in order to build a building. It's really limiting us to adding on to the, uh, we've got two trailers at the end of that building now. We probably couldn't put a third trailer out there because it would be too close to the right of way. So it's going to limit some structure that we could do possibly use the that land. Um, it's not a it's not a lot of movement, but that's not uh, that, that none of that belongs to the city of Broker now. All that belongs to the school system. And if actually we're going to think about it, they're actually basically asking to provide a half acre of our land uh, to be given to them or And the land that's on the other side of that move is basically worthless. My concern is, as I looked at it, and I wish I would have studied this a little more, was if you come up to the end uh, of the road, this property here, right now it is open land. And the what, what I have heard is that if there was a road here that could cut through, then they could develop this property back here. Um, so I'm wondering if the, the town is, I mean, I would just need more information to, to see what, uh, are they trying to use our property to gain access to cut through another road that is not showing on this map on the, I don't know, but I, I think we need, what we do not need is this to be a main traffic, I mean, we're trying to divert traffic away from our school. I really thought this traffic, this rain was the town of Brokers, but now that I hear that it's not, and they're trying to acquire property for a dollar, it would concern me. We don't want traffic here. That's what we try not to do, is to divert traffic to through our schools. Well, and, and follow up, I think it's been the perception for years of Broker because every, it looks to me like the parking drives, location mobile, Decisions have been made like that was hey, right away there. Decisions have been made, you can see with the design plan. And I, I, and I, I don't know that history. But I will share, and, and I think this fall brings up a good point. If you remember back when we talked about before they replaced the culverts, there was discussions of bringing a through road from a subdivision to connect here. But I think it was obvious that. Uh, 
put a lot of support for that, that option. So they went ahead and replaced the culvert with the existing drive. But now, as far as to have the extension here in the dog room, you know, we've not had any conversations. But I would agree, I, I don't think it would be in the best interest of the campus to that to the community. It is a uh, it is a dead end of the street now. And I can say uh, I'm not aware of any issues with traffic and that sort of thing because we currently we do stack the dog as our stacking uh, for street crop off the pick up. Uh, so uh, I guess the question I would uh, two questions. Is there a timeline on this that they need to see? Well, uh, they've been pushing for this, but you know I made it clear that you know, this that would be a more proof of uh, how and not the conversation. But, Again, uh, it's a pleasure to this board. I'll go back to the And I guess the other thing is, if we're using that, our property, that road, as a, as a stacking area, once we turn it over to the town of Grover, we would be having the option that we using that as a stacking area. Now, from, from this point, we are stacking the dog where they do currently have a 50 foot property. The actual road will be using here is more of our we did use that, even though they're not stacked or anything. Every park exits that way. Ah. Morning and afternoon. Oh, oh where they want the, the new park? Yes, sir. Uh, let me see if I can plug the, the actual flow that the parents take a ride. Yeah. And then we drop off in this area, and then they exit it back out. Uh, uh, but they don't stack on dogwood. Yes, sir. They do. See, dogwood is a, you know, probably an 800 foot drive. We use that. Uh, and actually, we'll share this. Uh, Burger Corner School has two crop lines. We use the front as well as the cause of the And I'm going to share this. You know, we did purchase the home. It's off of uh, Carolina. Give us maybe options down the road to create a better crop off. I would also, if you have a conversation, to see if there's an option to really make it a term late for our staff and so traffic. Uh, will, will they be building a turn lane? I don't think there's enough. Not enough price, but they're just going to do, just repay the small two lane road. And they have, you know, for the 50 foot right away, they have an option to get a two lane. I just don't feel like a turn. Uh, but again, going back, we do not have a lot of traffic there, and that has not been an issue. But if you would open it up, could we have cut it through? Mr. Garber, could I also uh, put the picture of the thing? Show, show us where the Smart Star building is. Okay. This is Grant. Right. Yes. And what I'm up for this. At the edge of our park, this is our Smart Star pre K. Right. Well, I'm just for the board. Yes. Okay. For, for the board members. When, when our students are walking, and this is several times a day, whether they're going to music or art or lunch, Show where they're going to be walking uh, because it's going to be right there where we're giving this right away. I think we have a, a separate walkway, for but it's very close. Yeah, it's, if, 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 if we, we get, get this right away up, then actually we have a uh, path for the students in a uh, that, that is true, but it is very close yeah. to this. Yeah. And, and if, if we, I, I mean, I'm kind of like Mr. Hall, I mean, I'm kind of worried that if we give this up, that we're opening ourselves up for traffic that we don't have right now. Because the only traffic you have are just those three or four houses that are up there. And, and that's a good question. I don't mind asking that. What plans do they have? Mr. Arbor, I noticed that the Dogwood Lane is great up until it gets to the last house. Currently, it's not safe. But they got on there showing, asking for right away from the people for the or to run up on the next vacant, this big uh, area of land up past it. So they're talking about uh, they're short of uh, additional fifth being on the road. Uh, and, and, and I think, and again, I'm not very often, but I think the idea is to have a, a way for you know, trash trucks to turn around. I can't say to bring a bus in there, but to have a actual turn around, I think, is sort of an idea there. But again, I my concern is if we're using that property as stacking and we turn that over to the town of the river and it becomes their jurisdiction, if we have cars there apart, what are we going to do if law enforcement comes up there and tells us we can't do that anymore? We're all stacking. I was going to say, aren't we all? We're, we're all you stacking. Say? We're stacking the town. That's their property. Right. Right.
ER group staff. And, and we do have, you know, I know Marion and that uh, Eric Grover, we do have a relationship with, with those areas that, that we are able to both stack those folks. I'm sorry, we could at least move that to we could move that road up 10 feet, 20 feet further to the north and certainly uh, enhance the value of our, of our main property. Will we, you know, we, we get it perfectly straight across there or not? Uh, at least if we could make, it, make some movement, it would be an advantage to our school system in the future. And if this road becomes busy, the further we can get that busy road away from our school, the problem is better, especially with the sharp curve and turn. Well, if it becomes a big street, we can't. It's going to be right side. So that's just, uh, I'm not sure if that doesn't happen. But, but I, I will uh, be more glad to go back to the best place. That's what I'm And that's what you, you're wanting by uh, tabling the motion this time, right? To table it to the next meeting and give him time to talk to the city program. Uh, along the lines of what you and Ms. Falls and Mr. Glover and Mr. Blank have mentioned. Okay. We've got a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes. Thank you, John. Uh, how, uh, how much property would we be up if you figured up if they cut that curve out and moved it over to the property line, moved it, moved it over to the property line instead of having it going through it? Um, uh, how much are you talking about that they would have to just build you? You're, uh, you're not 50 feet, you're not talking much more to build a 50 foot driveway a few hundred feet. Um, I'm thinking that's about 80 feet. I do know that there is a, a river route, uh, drainage, small gully right in front of it, 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 it. We basically have uh, catch basins on the, on the right side of Dollarwood. Part of this that they plan to. And then that water turns out there's really a, a runoff area in here. So I don't know if you could actually get to the, the proper line. But anything that you could move this way, yeah, um, and of course, better off you think. I mean, you know, uh, how feasible that would be with your funding, but I'll, I'll get that answer. Uh, it, you know, we, it would not hurt uh, our property if that should be closer to the proper line. With there being an existing road there and the expense with relocating that, and that I think that would be the issue that I'd have to address. Thank you. Next item of business consider, uh, considers the student transfer request. What's the pleasure of the board? Moved and seconded to approve the student transfer request as presented by the superintendent. Uh, any discussion? Dr. Fisher, any of these athletic related? Uh, not uh, Any further questions or comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Chair, will now that completing our business session. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. See you next week.